Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, my name is Mark Wallace. Welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. Well, this week we have a great question from Amanda Brown. Amanda asks, can you please explain how to take pictures while your camera is connected to your computer? I want to see what I'm shooting during a session. Well, you can absolutely do that. It's called tethered shooting, and it's pretty simple if you have Lightroom 3. Now, there are other ways to do this for Canon and Nikon and other cameras, but it's a little bit more complicated, and Lightroom 3 was just released, and I love how the remote capture or tethered shooting works. It's really easy, it's affordable, and almost anybody can do it. So we're gonna go to the studio and show you how it works. Well, we're here in the studio and I'm going to show you how easy it is to use Lightroom 3 for tethered shooting. And so what I've already done here is I have a Canon 5D Mark II turned on and I have a USB cable from my camera into my laptop. Now we've tried this with a bunch of different cameras, a Nikon D3X, D3S, a D90, a Canon 1D Mark IV, and this uh, Canon 5D Mark II, um, as well as some older cameras, and they all work about the same. In fact, shooting tethered with Lightroom 3 now is pretty simple, so simple, it's almost a no-brainer. So let me show you how to do it. Once you have Lightroom 3 open, I have this to a brand new catalog, so there's no images here, but you could just open up an existing catalog and append files to it, but I'm just going to keep it a clean slate. So first thing I'm going to do is go full screen on this, so I'm hitting F twice to get rid of my uh, dock there, and I'm going to go up here and say File, and then I'm going to say Tethered Capture, Start Tethered Capture. Now when I do that, I get a bunch of options here. And then uh, I have this uh, destination already set up, but you could choose a remote folder. Um, and then right here, um, this will ask me for some presets. So I have some metadata already preset, so it adds my copyright information, all the uh, IPTC data that I need. Um, and then I could go in here and add some keywords as well. So I'm gonna say Don Berger, because Don is our model, and maybe remote shooting so that we have that in there as well. But you could go on and on and add a bunch of keywords. I'll say OK. And now I have this bar that pops up here. Now what this bar is doing is first it'll see if there's a camera attached. And we have a Canon 5D Mark II attached, so that shows up. Now sometimes when you open this, if you haven't turned on your camera, it'll take about 30 to 60 seconds for the camera to show up. So if that happens to you, don't worry. Everything's just working together to uh, figure out where your camera is. Now the other thing it'll show is it shows your uh, shutter speed, aperture value, ISO numbers. Now, uh, on other versions, you can usually, with spe specifically with like the Canon version of remote capture, you can change these values. But here in Lightroom, you can't. You have to change them at the camera. But I can do a couple things uh, that makes it really easy. So Don, be all happy and look right into the camera. So we have our model looking in the camera, and I'll just push this big button here, and the camera actually fires. Uh, my pocket wizard fires our, uh, our strobes. And so here we have a photo of Don. Um, and so what I can do here is now I have this bar above, and that's sort of annoying to me. So what I can do is I can hit Command T, and it'll make that go away. And so I can always bring that back, Command T. Um, and so then what I can also do is I'm going to hide all my toolbars. I have that. I can zoom in. And now I can do some things like checking critical focus, make sure that my dynamic range is right. I have the lights falling exactly where I want them. And the other thing that's really nice, usually when we're shooting for a commercial client or doing catalog work, things like that, we'll have a laptop and a 24-inch display set up so that when I'm shooting, the uh, art director and you know the, the bigwigs can be looking at every single shot I have to make sure that we're getting the shots as we go along. So we have that. Um, so again, I can take a shot from my camera. So Don, look right at us. I'm just sort of shooting blind here. Um, but once that shoots, it's going to automatically bring it into Lightroom. And so I can go back here to the grid. Well, that actually brings it in like that. So whatever the last view is, you can do that. So I'm going to go in here. Now I've got a couple of shots. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to shoot a few more photos, and then after I'm done with that, I'm going to show you some other features in Lightroom that make tethered shooting really valuable. So let me take a few shots, then we'll come back and show you some of these advanced features that uh, everybody should know about. Okay, now that I've taken a few photos, what's happening is um, sometimes you can shoot faster than your computer can process the images. So if that's happening, just wait a little second and everything will pop in. But now that we have all these images, what we want to do is use Lightroom's uh, 
functionality for survey mode to figure out which pictures to choose. So first of all, I see that these three images here are very similar. So I'm going to select all of those, and then I'm going to push the button in. And that brings up three of those photos. So I can go and look at these one by one and say, ah, you know, that one isn't so good. And this one here, um, I don't like that one so much. I can get rid of that. And so I can say, that's my winner. Then I'll hit P and mark that as a pick. So I hit G again, and I'll go back out here and say, OK, here's uh, four shots that I took. And I'll hit N. And then I can compare these again. So I can say right off the bat, that one is not my favorite. This one is not my favorite. And now it's down to these two images. This one is a little bit too much hair in her eye. And so that is my winner. And so now I have my winners picked. And if you shot a session of, let's say, 100 pictures or even more, this really, really will help you. Now there's some other things that you can do. I'm going to hit T to bring up my toolbar. And so let's say that this first photo is the one I really like. I'm going to go down here, and I've got a compare mode. And so I can hit C, or I can click this icon right here. And what it will do is it'll bring up, um, and I'm going to turn my toolbar off by hitting T. It will bring up my uh, image that I've selected. In other words, that's the winner that I like. Um, and this is the candidate saying, is this better than this? And I don't think it is. So what I'll do is I'll go to the next photo. Is that better than that? Uh, no. Is that better than that? Yeah, I sort of think that is. So I'll bring up my toolbar. And I'm going to say, what I want to do is I want to replace my select with my candidate. So I'm going to say, this is better than this. So I'll click this button. So now that's going to go over there. Now this is my winner. Now I'm going to compare this one to this one. No, it's not as good. Is that one better? No. Is that one better? Yeah, that one is better. So I'm going to click that one over. I'll compare it to this one. And so I can compare one with all the others. And then once I get it, I'll look at this one. And I'll say, that is my winner right there. And I rate it three stars by just hitting three. Then when I go back to my grid view, I can say, well, guess what? That's the best shot of the bunch. OK, so I just did that really quick. But if you had a bunch of photos, you can either use survey mo mode or compare mode to choose the one that is best for you. Now, there's one more feature I really want to show you um, before we run out of time. And that is, again, I'm going to go back to G, which is my grid mode. I'm going to hit Command T to bring up my remote capture settings. Now, let's say I wanted to do really high contrast black and white, and I want Lightroom to process that on the fly. Well, all of the develop settings that you're familiar with in Lightroom are right here in this remote capture. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to say I want a black and white filter, and I'm looking at a high contrast filter. So let me see if I can find that really fast. There we go. Black and white creative, high contrast. Now, anything I shoot is going to be interpreted through that develop setting. Now, this is really important. If you shoot raw, you can always undo those changes. If you're shooting JPEG, well, that's going to be applied permanently. So make sure that you choose to shoot the appropriate file. So I usually shoot raw. Today, we're shooting a large JPEG just to keep things moving fast. So now that I have that, I'm going to get rid of my tabs on the side. I'm going to hit Control T to get rid of my capture window. And now I'm going to shoot again. And what you'll see is the images will come up black and white. So I'm going to bring up this guy. And we'll see as I shoot, those will come up black and white. So Don, look right at me. Excellent. Look a little bit into the light. So turn your whole body toward the light. There you go. And just with your eyes, look at me. Excellent. OK, so we shot two images. And you can see those are coming in as high, high contrast black and white. And I can choose any of the develop settings to get the look that I want. And I can even uh, mix and match. If I shoot raw, I even have more processing power on the back end. So Lightroom 3 makes tethered shooting just effortless. And it gives you all the ability to either show your pictures as you're shooting to an art director or a customer. It allows you to do sorting on the fly. You can do keywording automatically. And you can even do some post-processing automatically as you're shooting as well. Well, again, thanks for that great question, Amanda. Remote shooting using Lightroom 3 is super, super easy. So try it out yourself. Now remember, if you have questions about photography or techniques or anything related to photography, you can send those to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.